The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. Audiobook Chapter Twenty Two. For the previous chapters, please head on to link below. In this channel, we upload book-related videos every week. If you like setting goals and achieving them, smash the like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on new books. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. What an idiot I had been. A big, dumb, foolish idiot. Early that morning, when my alarm had gone off a little after dawn and had slipped out of Aaron's warm embrace quietly, but not panic-ridden, I had immediately regretted agreeing to meet my sister hours before the wedding. So, once I got everything packed and was ready to go, right before sneaking out the door without waking him up, even though I'd learned by then that he too slept like the dead, I leaned very silently and brushed a soft kiss against his jaw, because I didn't want to go. Not really, and I was a weak, weak woman when it came to him. Just in case, I left Aaron a note telling him that I'd see him in a few hours, he said to getting ready with Isabel. Chato would be driving him to the wedding venue. Be strong and don't succumb, I wrote down. Then he signed it with, with love, Lena. My choice of words had my heart skipping a beat, but I promised myself it wasn't a big deal and left it there. Not more than an hour after leaving the apartment, I started to miss him like properly brooding and sighing and wondering what he was doing. So I texted him. Did you get my note? To which he replied no more than a couple of minutes later. Yes, I'm hiding in the bathroom. Chara was trying to sneak a photo of me with her phone. But Dean's are one of those creatures. That had me snorting so hard that the makeup artist ended up brushing eyeshadow all across my forehead. She tried to play it cool, but I could tell she was best. But none of that was the reason why I was pretty sure I was a big, dumb, foolish idiot. Somehow, somewhere between slipping into my velvet chiffon heels and the graceful, airy burgundy gown I was wearing, my head had started spinning questions, important ones. Will I be able to find Aaron in the crowd? And also, will he be okay? Will he get to the venue and find a seat? And the star of the show? Maybe I won't see him until again, later in the ceremony. What if I can't find him? So, when I came to a place to ride with my bride, on a glorious summer day, surrounded by arrangements of peonies in all sides of baby pink and pearly white, in front of the people who had seen us grow and turn into the women we were today, my heart turned. My gaze effortlessly zeroed in on a pair of ocean blue eyes. And all those questions immediately died out. What a big, dumb, foolish idiot I had been to even question that my eyes wouldn't be drawn to Aaron Blackford in a matter of seconds. How in the world could they not? He was dazzling, standing under the sun in a navy blue suit, and when he smiled, the wide and furtive grin that I was beginning to think was only for me, I swore it could have blinded me if I hadn't blinked. That smile, Aaron's smile, his handsome face, him completely and entirely, made my knees weak and my chest tight. That was exactly why once the ceremony ended and Gonzalo made a show out of eating Isabel's face right then and there for everybody attending to see, I turned around in shaky legs. The crowd proceeded to throw rice and confetti as the bride and groom made their way down the aisle, and by the time they were jumping inside a yellow Volkswagen Beetle to drive to where they have a pre-dinner photo shoot. Everybody started shuffling to the restaurant area. A quiet silence was left behind, except for the sound of my heart, which was trying to stumble right out of my throat. Aaron waited by the exit, standing with his hands in the pockets of his navy pants and his jacket partly opened, right where the rows of creamy chairs ended. A few tiny pieces of confetti stuck in his hair. His gaze stayed on me as I walked down that aisle my legs feeling like I was walking in sand, heavy and clumsy. Only when I reached him did he take a step toward me. He was fast and rushed, as if he had been stopping himself from running to me and couldn't hold it any longer. I watched his third work, his eyes swiping up and down and up again, eating up what was in front of them. You look like a dream, 
What a silly thing to tell me when it was him. The one who couldn't be real. The one I couldn't believe was here. Making my chest full with things I didn't understand. I shook my head, trying to pull myself together enough to answer. You look amazing, Aaron. His gaze nourished my face for a brief moment, and whatever he found made him smile. Again, that grin. Only for me. What a lucky bitch I was. Aaron offered his arm and I struggled not to launch myself at him right then and there. May I have the honor? He asked slowly. A deep belly laugh left my lips. Slowly, I took it. Now you're just pushing it. His palm fell on top of the one that was resting in the crack of his arm. What do you mean? Only ruins here is say stuff like that, and you're talking about the ones in a Jane Austen novel. Not even your run of the mill Romans here would butter up a woman that much. I explained as we moved forward in the direction of the adjoining restaurant where everybody else was probably a glass of wine or two already in hand. In my book, having the most beautiful woman in my arm classifies as an honor, he said. I hope the foundation the makeup artist had had to apply for a second time covered the way my cheeks flushed. If the bride so much as gets wind of what you're saying, I'll be in so much trouble. I heard his chuckle, but it didn't retract his words. She'll kick you out of the wedding, and I will not be able to help you. You're too tall and big and sneak in unnoticed. And too handsome too. But I got that part to myself. Aaron chuckled again, the noise traveling down my spine and leaving a trail of shivers. I was finding it really hard to ignore how good his arm felt under my fingers, or how right being tucked in his side was. It was only when we were a few feet away from the open area, where all the invitees were gathered, that Aaron spoke. It would be worth it, you know. My head turned, taking in his profile as he kept his gaze up front. For seeing you in that dress and having you enter my place on my arm, I'd enjoy pretty much anything. My lips parted, and had Aaron not been providing me support, I would have tumbled down to the floor, rolled the rest of the way, and probably stopped only when it back came against a chair or a table. Even your sister's rage. Then a flash went off right in our faces, snapping me out of trance, blinking away the bright white spots. I got a glimpse of a camera. A high-pitched voice I was well acquainted with screeched. What a beautiful couple you two make! My mouth snapped shut and then opened again. Not having my sight back completely, I kept blinking until bright red name started coming into focus. Shadow. All your babies are going to be the cutest thing ever! I cursed under my breath and smiled tightly while Aaron seemed surprisingly unconcerned. The dumbest mental image took me by surprise. One of Aaron holding a chubby, blue-eyed baby in his large arms. Stepping out of my cousin's trajectory, in fear for the wine, I tried to recompose myself. And so it begins, I muttered under my breath, the day I feared and dreaded for months. Only in the precise moment, with Aaron's arm under my fingers and his smile aimed at me, I came to realize that I wasn't frightened, nothing I had ever come to expect. If I knew that my sister had hired a cast cow for the wedding reception, I would have claimed to be second hidden in the bathroom. Ironically, I wouldn't have to lie all that much. My dinner kept climbing up my throat every single time the tune announcing the start of the most painful 30 seconds of my life reached my ears. During that time, that stretched into hellish eternity, the camera scanned the crowd seated in the round tables, scattered across the lush green garden of the restaurant, before coming to a stop on a couple and displaying their image, framed by hearts and a conveniently installed projector. Every single time the camera so much as passed over my fake date and me, my heart ceased beating before assuming a breakneck speed. Apparently, the possibility of having my first kiss with Aaron displayed on a big screen in front of my whole family was going to give me a heart attack. And just as if my thoughts had somewhat been cheered, the trident scene announced the start of a new round of Will Lena die of nerves and anticipation tonight? Or will she lose her shit and c commit camera murder? Oh, what a fun idea this was, Isabel! My mom hollered with excitement from across the table. 
my sister seemed to pride herself even more, if that was possible. I know. She smiled giddy. We even put all, all the film together, edited, and sent me a montage with all the kisses. She explained over the relentless tune of doom. One eye on the projector screen, I watched a camera hover on a table close by. I had to book an extra package for that, but it's totally worth it. The camera swiped over a table, displaying errands in my faces on the screen. My face flashed. My hand somehow jerked, dropping off a fork. I dipped after it, too briskly, and almost knocked over a glass, cursing under my breath. I picked up the floor from under the table, we were surfacing just in time to see the camera moving along. Close. That was so close. Reaching for my wine, I actually considered sneaking out and putting an end to this. But that would be running. Being a coward. Again. Something I kept doing. A lot of lately. If the camera stops on you, you will kiss Erin, I told myself, as I downed the rest of my wine. A peck on the lips. It doesn't need to be a movie kiss, just a kiss. But my pep talk didn't help. It only made my chest tighter and my belly flutter. Peeking at the man that I'd probably have to kiss in a handful of seconds, I was surprised to see a muscle in his jaw jumping. Studying him more closely, I realized Aaron looked like New York Aaron again, not like the relaxed and playful version he had shared these past days with. His gaze was set on the screen. And while his face gave nothing away, at least not to those who hadn't mastered the art of reading Aaron like I had, there was something about him that told me he wasn't as fine as he looked. Once more, the camera glided over us, putting our face into the screen for a tenth second and moved on. My heart resumed. Before I could feel any kind of relief, it came right back, as if it were performing a dance, especially choreographed for me teasing my heartbeat until sending it into cardiac arrest, like droplets of sweat formed in the nape of my neck. Aaron remained quiet to my side, steadfast, his eyes drilled into the skin sheet, so much the concern started seeping in. The crowd hooted as the camera cruised across our table again, the speed decreasing gradually. Looking at Aaron, it was hard to notice much else besides him. I was barely aware of how the integrants of our table had come alive, clapping and whistling to two at the goddamn kiss cap. My eyes zeroed on Aaron's lips, pressed in a flat line. Anxiety and anticipation. Yes, powerful and silky anticipation. Built in the pit of my belly. My gaze took in his whole body, cyclist sitting by my side, amid the chaos around us. I still managed to catch the movement of his knee. It was bouncing. The motion barely lasted more than a couple of seconds, but I had seen it. My gaze leaped back to his profile. Is Aaron nervous about kissing me? It can't be. Not after the way he had always done that, right after teasing and plummeting me to a point where I would have begged for his lips. Unaware of my eyes on him, his knee resumed the bounce, the muscle in his jaw twitching again in sync. Oh my god, he is. Aaron was nervous. He was all jittery and high-strung, and it was because of me. Because chances were we'd have to guess. Nothing to fight right between my ribs. I couldn't believe how a man so confident, so composed, one who had made my body come alive and sing with nothing more than the softest of touches, could be fussing over having to kiss me. The flutter in my chest stared making me itch to reach. A loud cheer exploded around us, taking my attention off Aaron. People chanted. Kiss, kiss. My eyes leaped around desperately, my heart rising to my mouth. Everybody was looking in our direction. I'll do it. I'll get some. As I zeroed in on the screen, something lured to my pitch in my stomach in response to what I saw. My dad reached from mom's face, and planted a kiss on her lips. It was a relief. What had pierced my body was disappointment. Baffling, inexplicable, disappointment to me, not being the one framed by the silly string of hearts, because my parents had been targeted by the kiss cow, not us. I felt Aaron move beside me. Turning in his direction, my gaze hopefully fastened to his lips again, his mouth. The speck of disappointment grew, 
obliterating everything else and turning into something thick and heavy that promised a rich taste in my tongue, one that made my heart speed up. Once, I realized, what I felt was neat. I wanted him, needed him to gather me in his arms and kiss me like he had promised, because when I finally take those lips in mine, it will be the furthest thing from standing. That was what he said. It wasn't what I was feeling inside. What threatened to spill out and turn my life around? The furthest thing from life? From pretending? It was. Consequences be damned, but I was. I was long past this deception scheme, and the pile of emotions that came with that realization collapsed down my chest, crumbling along the rest of my body and taking everything in its way with it. Real. What I was feeling had to be real. I wanted it to be real. Aaron was a feather shift in me, naturally, as he was the one person on earth who seemed to read me like he owned the only copy to the handbook of Lena. His gaze sharpened, rubbing around my face as I watched in awe how his lips parted. It was in that precise moment that I felt like something had finally clicked into place, unhinging everything I had been keeping on a short leash. I couldn't know how or what, didn't even have the slightest idea. And wasn't that part of the mystery of life? Part of what made it breathtakingly exciting? Unexpectedly beautiful? We couldn't control and tame emotions to our convenience. And what I felt for Aaron had turned into a wild beast that I mercilessly fell prey to. That was exactly why, when Aaron quietly reached my hand, took it in his and stood up, I followed. Every single thing that had stopped me in these past few days was obliterated in the chaos that had built around us. We had to cross the space, sidestepping people who now danced animatedly, eluding relatives with red cheeks and ruffled hair who lunged into our direction, ignoring the music filling the outdoors the space that called everybody to the imp improvised dance floor. But what did I care? Nothing mattered, except following this man wherever he took me. Like a glass, I had been filling up, droplet after droplet, slowly packing all these things he had given me. The softest, most provoking touches, precious smiles were just for me, his strength, his faith in me, to the brim, and heaping with everything I had been feeling. I found myself on the verge of being toppled down, of helplessness pelling and revealing everything I had worked so hard on bottling up. We were somewhere outside still, perhaps on one of the sides of the patio of the restaurant. The music from the party reached my ears, muffled by the distance, and the only light illuminating the section of the garden came from a lonely lamp perched on the far edge of the building, leaving us almost in the dark. Aaron came to a stop, finally turning around and facing me. His jaw was clenched again, the rest of his features screwed securely together so that they gave nothing away. But I knew, I knew. My feet shuffled in the grave gravel beneath them, telling me this couldn't be a frequented path for guests, that my heels didn't seem to stand still for more than a few seconds. Or perhaps it was just me and the way my body shook what stopped me from remaining upright. Aaron took a step forward, his body angling toward mine, deliciously crowding me, and forcing my back to the come against the coarse surface of the wall. Hi! I croaked as if we were just seeing each other after a long time, and God, why did it feel so much like we were, like I was finally here, finally coming home. I watched Aaron throw it back, and then he took a deep breath through his nose. Hey. His palm came to rest on my jaw, cupping my face. As we were in thinking, my heart raised to the prospect of doing so as I anticipated his answer with a trepidation I had never known. But it was better than him asking me to speak what was in mine. What are you thinking, Aaron? A hum rose in his throat, the sound deep and husky. It shot straight to my chest. I'm thinking that you want to kiss me. My blood swirled at his words, turning thicker. I do. And I'm also thinking if I don't do it soon, I might lose my mind. 
the palm that was cupping my face fell, and a finger trailed down the skin of my arm. I didn't speak. I didn't think I could. His gaze traveled down my throat, leaving a path of shivers on my skin. But I was serious when he said that when you finally took your lips, you knew what it meant. He stepped closer, the tips of his shoes grazing mine, our bodies almost touching. I braced my hands in his arms, not trusting myself anymore, seeing is how I shook, how I trembled. Do you know Catalina? His nails brushed my temple, making my breath pitch. Do you know what it means? Aaron's nose flicked along my cheekbone, making my back arch, my shoulders coming flush against the wall behind me. My lips parted, my answer stuck somewhere in my throat. He released a shaky breath, his body tight with restraint. Answer me. Aaron's forehead came to rest against mine, and I watched his eyelashes hide that ocean I'd gladly drown in if he let me. Eyes closed. He inched closer, his lips almost coming against mine. Pull me out of my mystery, Catalina, he greeted out, cupping the back of my head with trembling fingers. My heart, my poor heart, lost it at the desperation in his voice, at the unfiltered need I heard. I finally breathed into his mouth. This is real, I repeated, needing to hear the words, feel the truth on my skin. Kiss me, Aaron, I told him breathlessly. Prove to me that it is. A growl, a delirious and low growl, left Aaron's mouth, and before I could even process how the sound had seeped deep, deep inside of me, right into the marrow of my bones, Aaron's lips were in mine. He kissed me. Aaron was kissing me, as if he had been starving for an eternity. Just like a beast meant to devour me, his hard body coming against mine, desperately seeking anything I'd give him. Our lips opened, ravaging each other's mouths, while his large palms thrown down my sides. Down they went, stopping below my waist. My hands flew to his chest, and I relished how hard it felt, how warm, how perfectly solid, and just for me. My heart drummed against walls of my own chest and a sound climbed up my throat when I felt Aaron's heart do the same against my fingertips. Noise only fueled Aaron to press into me with his hips, to reward me with a wild sound of his own. His hands gripped my waist, bringing me even closer to him, making me feel the heat of his hardness on my belly and punching another moon out of me. My mind seemed to chant as my body went on sensory overload. His hands roamed over the fabric of my dress, coming around me, dragging down my back, all while his tongue danced against mine. Another press of his hands against mine made my body spin out of control and spent more and more heat to pull between my thighs. Aaron's lips left mine, revealing he was breathing as violently as I was. Without wasting moment, his mouth landed in a soft spot between my jaw and neck, looking up at the dark sky. I bowed my throat for him. Another whimper left me, carried away by the breeze coming from the sea. That sound is driving me insane. Insanity. That was what this was. It was pumping in my veins. He kissed a path up my throat, veering from my ear, leaving little nips that left my blood roaring, thundering across my body. My hands tore up his white chest, reaching the nape of his neck. My fingers tangled in his hair, pulling at it softly when he nibbled at his skin below my earlobe. When he grazed his teeth over it, I pulled a little harder. In a swift move, Aaron picked me off from the floor, my legs going around him and my arms wrapping tighter around his neck. Somewhere in the back of my head, I worried about the fabric of the dress, about it not being airy or thin enough so it let me feel him. Aaron, all of them. Every doubt fled my mind as it pushed against me once more. My back came hard against the wall, and I could feel his love nestled between my legs. Hot. He was so hot and hard. That's not enough. More, I implored. I wanted more. 
but she had dressed to pieces if I had to. As he rubbed his hands in one firm motion that made me see the stars, his lips found mine again, muffling another of my moods. You're killing me, Catalina, he said against my lips, my hold in his neck tightened, trying to bring him even closer. With another motion of his hips, he positioned himself right against my crease, always tipping me over the edge. Aaron pressed again against me, the heat of his hardness fiercely seeping through the layers of clothing beneath us. I begged again. I wasn't ashamed. I do it again, and again, and again. So demanding. A husky chuckle caressed my lips. If I snuck my heart under hand under your dress. Aaron wraps against my mouth, rocking against me, and throbbing between my legs. How what would I find you? He wouldn't believe just how much. I didn't think I'd ever be this turned on, this aroused, his recklessly desperate for more. Aaron grazed my lips with us, the touch barely enough to appease me. I'm not going to do that. His voice was husky, bathed in need I felt washing over my body. Not now. Why? I breathed out. Because I wouldn't be able to help myself. He growled in my ear. He rocked his hips against me once more, pressing me harder against the coarse surface behind my back. And the first time I'm inside of you, it's not going to be a quick fuck against the wall. I whimpered at his words, at the loss of not having what he had just painted so clearly in my head. I'd give anything to have him bury himself deep inside me. Perhaps that way I wouldn't feel this void in the center of my chest. His forehead came to rest on top of mine again. Every motion came to a painful stop. I'd die a happy man if I could make you come right here now, Aaron said, making me shiver. But anyone could walk by and see us, and that's a privilege I want for just myself. Sighing, I trailed my fingers in his hair and then around his neck until coming to cuff his jaw. Slowly, I came to my senses. You're right. My lips buckered, pouting. Blue eyes that shone like they had never done before, crinkled with a smile. Look at that, he said before kissing me firmly. Way too briefly for me to be anywhere satisfied. I would get foolish, crazy ideas if you start agreeing with me so easily. That caught my power to fall just a smidgen, and perhaps a small smile peeked out. And just as I was considering puckering my lips again, remembering how hot and bothered I still was, his head dipped again and I cast the remainder of that pout off my face. Let's go. Your family is probably wondering where we are. He slowly dropped me to the floor. Then, he brushed his fingers over a few strands of hair that had come out of place, the back of his hand grazing my cheek before he stepped back. Perfect, he said, looking me up and down. And the word traveled straight to the middle of my chest. He offered his hand and I took it before it hovered in the air for a complete second. I was a needy woman, it seemed, and when I came to Aaron, I'd take from him as much as he was willing to give me. And then, perhaps, I'd beg for more. Thanks so much for watching and listening to The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. For the continuation of this book, please head on to the link below. Enjoy your book and have a nice day.